but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Many Israelites are miscommunicating with the Most High because they do not understand that the Most High is a spirit and he only communicates with your spirit. When the Most High responds to your prayers, many Israelites are expecting him to reply to their flesh. Because Israelites were not properly taught to operate in the spirit, majority of Israelites cannot understand when the Most High is speaking. Therefore, miscommunication takes place between the Most High and his people. Israelites, it is important to understand what it means to operate in the Spirit. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. When you comprehend how to operate in the Spirit, you will be able to understand when the Most High is speaking. By the way, when you operate in the Spirit, Yah is in control. When you operate in the flesh, Satan is in control. What does it mean to operate in the Spirit? The Scriptures reveal to us that the Most High is a Spirit. Yah is looking for his people to worship and serve him in the spirit and in the truth. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The scripture said we must worship worship Yah in the spirit and in the truth. The scriptures did not give us the option to worship the Most High any other way. What does it mean to operate in the spirit? The Most High do not have a human body. We have a human body. Your human flesh is a house that can seal your spirit. Your spirit is the real you. When your body is resting or asleep, your spirit never sleeps. Your spirit is in the spiritual realm, interacting with spirits that dwell in the spirit realm. Your human body remains asleep on your bed in the physical realm. You do not need your human body to operate in the spiritual realm. In the physical realm, you need your human body to function. The most highest requirement for the physical realm is that a spirit must have a body. This is why the unclean spirits needs you. They cannot function in this physical realm without a body. In addition, Yah gave humans dominion in the physical realm. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Satan and his devils cannot jump on you and overtake you. They must deceive you into a covenant to grant them permission to dwell in you to take possession of the physical realm. Israelites, regardless to how little you think of yourself, you are an asset. The kingdom of darkness do not care what race, sex, and religion you follow. They need a body to execute their agenda in the physical realm. Some people believe they are not important. Therefore, Satan do not need them and they are of no value to the kingdom of darkness. Do not be fooled. An unclean spirit will gladly take the body you devalue. Once an unclean devil finds a home, he will bring thousands of other devils to dwell in the same body. The scriptures reveal to us how the man in the tombs had legions of devils operating in him. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adore thee by God, that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. The unclean spirit will gladly share your body with multiple spirits. That is why the man in the tombs had thousands of demons dwelling in him. As long as these spirits have a body to call home, they are at peace. The scriptures reveal to us that when an unclean spirit is cast out of a person, it seeks another place to find rest. 
When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. If the unclean spirit cannot find a new place, it will return to where it was cast out of and bring other devils more powerful than it to dwell there. Israelites, spirits can be tormented. Disembodied spirits cannot find rest until they find a body. Israelites, it is important when you cast out devils, you instruct the unclean spirits to go into their beas, a place where devils are held to be tormented. If you do not instruct the unclean spirits where to go, it stays in dry places, seeking a place to rest. If it cannot find a home, it will go back to its original house. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. Israelites, I hope you understand why the unclean spirits asked Yahshua to go into the pigs instead of sending them into the pit. They did not want to be tormented before their time. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there an herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Israelites, your human body is an asset to the kingdom of darkness, regardless to how little you think of yourself. Now that you know your body can house multiple spirits, Israelites, remember every personality is a spirit. For example, if you are a humble person, this indicates that the humble spirit is in you. A person with great wisdom has the spirit of wisdom operating in them. If you are shy, then this indicate the spirit of fear lives in you. If you know a person that is always lying, that person has a lying spirit operating in them. If a person is always angry and cannot control their anger, the spirit of anger is operating in that person. Besides your spirit, whatever personality trait you have, regardless if it's good or bad, that spirit lives in your body. If you meet a person and you examine them and notice he or she is loud, talkative, boastful, and full of jealousy, gossip more than others, all of these attributes are spirits living in that person. I hope the example help you understand a person's personality. Spirits sharing your human suit. In order for the Most High to operate in us and to never leave nor forsake his people as he promised, Yah's spirit lives in us, the Holy Spirit. That is how the Most High communicate with you. Israelites, get to know Yah's Spirit and become one with the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit's job to reveal truth to you and tell you the things to come. Besides revealing truth, the Holy Spirit has multiple jobs. But God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Not everyone has Yah's spirit operating in him or her. The world cannot receive Yah's spirit for they do not know him. If a person is wicked, Yah's spirit will not dwell in that person. That person is in the flesh and Satan is in control of that individual. The scripture said you could not please the most high in the flesh. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Yah is a spirit and we are spirits housed in a human body. In order for us to communicate with our Elohim, we have to walk in the spirit. If you are familiar with the praying series on this channel, the first two messages was on the voice of Yah. Israelites, it is important to know Yah's voice. In the praying series, I ask you to participate in an exercise. I ask you to say, I love you in your mind. You went on to learn when you said, I love you in your mind. That was your spirit talking. In order for you to communicate with the Most High, you have to pray.
Prayer is having a conversation with the Most High. During prayer, you ask the Most High questions. Anything that you are in need of or if you want to strengthen the bond you have with the Most High. When you pray, you can pray out loud or in your mind. Israelites, when the Most High respond to your prayers, when the Most High give you instructions, and when he reveal anything to you, Yah will speak to your spirit. The Holy Spirit that lives in you will speak to your spirit. The way the Holy Spirit communicate with you is by placing a thought in your mind. The thought will be unique. It will stand out from your own thoughts, even though the voice you hear sounds like your voice. Sometimes the thought will instruct you or give you the answer to your prayers. Another way the Holy Spirit communicate with your spirit is by giving you an idea. When you operate in the spirit, you have a close bond or relationship with the Most High. That bond or relationship is everything, Israelites, everything. Because anything that has to do with the spirit is unseen. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Israelites, it is important that you establish a bond or relationship with the Most High. When the Most High speak, you can recognize his voice. No one can detour you from his instructions. A relationship or bond is what many Israelites are missing in their spiritual journey. Without that bond, you will not recognize nor understand your Elohim. When a woman gives birth to her baby, she quickly establishes a bond with her newborn. Whenever the mother is present, the baby will know because of that bond. Her newborn will feel safe because mom is present. Whenever a stranger comes around, the baby will know and cry. Likewise, Israelites, the bond established with the Most High is important in your journey. You will need to trust the Most High for the things you cannot see. When Yah speak to your spirit, you will know because you will be able to recognize his voice. The scripture said, my sheep knows my voice and they follow me. The stranger's voice, they will not follow. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. When he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. When the Most High interact with you via a dream, he is speaking with your spirit. Your body is asleep on your bed. Everything that has to do with the Most High is spiritual. That is why the Most High want his people to worship him in the spirit and in the truth. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you possess the fruits of the Spirit, that is a good indicator that you are being led by Yah's Spirit. To serve Yah in the Spirit is to allow yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit that dwell in you. In addition, following the commandments and statutes of the Most High. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. None of us have seen the Most High with our physical eyes. The Bible said no one could see the Most High and live. Although no one has seen the Father, He is closer to us than we know. You do not have to see the Most High to know that He exists. The same way we cannot see wind. But when the wind blow, there is evidence wind exists because you see the leaves moving and the wind grazing your face. Just because no one has laid eyes on the Most High, do not conclude He does not exist. There is evidence that He exists. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. Israelites, you have to get to the point that you do not have to see the Most High to know he's the one leading and speaking to you. As long as you can recognize his voice, that is all that you need to trust the Most High. He will guide you in the right direction. The Most High want us to get to the point where we don't have to see the things we need to know that it exists. For example, you want a mate. You have to believe that Yah already have someone in mind for you. You do not have to see him beforehand to know the Most High has already made his selection for you before the foundation of this earth was laid. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Walking in the Spirit requires faith. Faith is believing Yah for the things we cannot see. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for 
the evidence of things not seen. The scriptures reveal to us that we live by faith and not by sight. But we walk by faith, not by sight. Israelites, when the Most High spoke to Noah and made a covenant with him, Yah spoke to Noah in the spirit. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife, and thy sons' wives with thee. Noah had a relationship with the Most High. It was through that relationship Noah believed and trusted the Most High and followed Yah's instructions to build the ark. The scriptures reveal Noah was a righteous man. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Nobody listened nor believed Noah when he warned the people of the coming flood. The people in Noah's generation thought Noah was crazy for building that humongous boat. That is how people who are led by the flesh analyze everything in unbelief. Those who operate in the flesh cannot see past what's in front of them. In addition, they always need proof before they believe. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Faith is kryptonite to those who operate in the flesh. Noah recognized Yah's voice when Yah spoke to his spirit. Yah did not manifest in the flesh to instruct Noah on how to build the ark. The Most High appeared to Abraham in a dream to establish the everlasting covenant with him. Abraham trusted the Most High. He left everything he was familiar with to go to a place he did not know. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. Abraham trusted that the Most High would provide a lamb to sacrifice for the replacement of his son Isaac. Abraham recognized Yah's voice by the relationship he had with the Most High. Because of that bond, he followed Yah's instructions. Faith is important if you're walking in the spirit. The people who operate in the flesh would label Abraham and Noah as mentally ill simply because they act without evidence. In this generation, people are quick to label a person whose belief do not correspond with the popular belief of this world. The spiritual affairs of the Most High are foolishness to those who are perishing. In addition, the flesh cannot understand what is spiritual because the flesh is not spiritually discerned. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, but they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Israelites, you must learn how to operate in the Spirit. That is the only way you'll be able to recognize the Most High. That is how the Most High will respond to you and establish covenants with you. Yah will not speak to your flesh. Remember, the Most High said you cannot please Him in the flesh. The work of the flesh is in opposition to the work of the Spirit. The flesh will not submit to the laws of the Most High. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. When the Most High changed the direction of this channel, Yah did not appear to me in the flesh. Yah spoke to my spirit. While I was setting up my channel on YouTube, I received a thought that said to talk about my journey with the Most High. I praise Yah every day for changing the direction of this channel. I recognized the voice that spoke to me and I complied. Keep in mind, Israelites, I spent a lot of time in the presence of the Most High. This is why I'm able to recognize His voice. If my flesh was dominant, then I would have rejected the Holy Spirit and proceed with what I wanted to do. The reason many Israelites want the Most High to speak to their flesh, they are familiar with the flesh. The scripture said, place no confidence in the flesh. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Everything that has to do with the flesh is against the Most High. The flesh is not in obedience to the Most High. 
The pagan church is teaching the Israelites to operate in the flesh. During praise and worship, the people are dancing, singing, passing out, and the Most High is not accepting their worship. Just because you felt good after your performance, it does not conclude the Most High receive your worship. The worship that stems from the church gratify the flesh and not the spirit. In most churches, praise and worship is entertainment for the people. In addition, a strategy the wicked spiritual leaders use to make sure the sheep come back next Sunday. The scriptures reveal to us that the voice of Yah is a still small voice. In order for you to hear Yah's voice, you have to clear your mind from all the distractions and be still. When the saints are jumping up and down during worship, screaming in the middle of the sermon, giving their neighbor high five, how can they hear the most high? When your mind is preoccupied, you cannot hear the most high. Satan makes sure to clutter your mind to keep you from hearing from the most high. That is how many miss the answers to their prayers. Israelites, you have to understand walking in the spirit is dealing with the things you cannot see. The things that you cannot see is dictating your life. The things you see are temporary and the things unseen are eternal. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Many people associate their financial problems with a lack of money. Most people will work two to three jobs and it would not resolve their financial problems. The people who operate in the flesh believe working overtime will solve their financial problems. However, working overtime is a temporary fix. Just as the scriptures reveal to you that things seen are temporary. If you walk in the spirit, you will understand that your problem is an unseen entity. You must attack the root. The root cause to all of your problem is in the spiritual realm. To gain financial freedom, you have to attack the spirit of poverty. The spirit of poverty is a disembodied spirit making it unseen. Just as the scriptures disclose to you that the matters of the spirit is unseen. Do you understand the concept, Israelites? Can you comprehend how the things you cannot see is ruling your life? Israelites, it makes sense to understand how to operate in the spirit to gain control of your life. When Yah spoke to Joseph's spirit via a dream and instruct him to go to Egypt with Yahshua, Joseph could have ignored the dream. Joseph, who has a relationship with the Most High, recognized Yah's voice and obeyed the Most High. Yah did not manifest in the flesh to warn Joseph of the danger against Yahshua. As critical as this matter was, Yah spoke to Joseph's spirit. This is a good indicator that the spiritual realm is where life operates and the physical realm is revealing what took place in the spiritual realm. A person who operates in the flesh would dismiss the dream because they do not understand what is happening. To them, it's just a dream with no meaning. In this generation, not many people will relocate based on the dream they had. The Most High would have to warn his people multiple times before they make the move. This is why many are not where they should be in life because they ignore the things of the Spirit. When Yah is responding to them, they cannot understand nor do they seek the Most High for the answers. They rather find a prophet, pastor, or some kind of a spiritual leader to tell them what Yah said, putting their confidence in men. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Israelites, you do not need another person to tell you what Yah said. Yah will tell you himself. He did not give you his spirit for no reason. The kingdom of darkness and its human agents has programmed us to operate in the flesh. Today, the Most High is calling you out of the natural man, the flesh, to operate in the spirit. If you are waiting for the Most High to respond to your flesh, you will be waiting a long time. Yah only talk to your spirit, for he is a spirit, and those that worship him must worship him in the spirit and in the truth. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit.